Johan Vermeer was a Dutch painter, born in 1632 to a family of artists. His father was a weaver and an art dealer. Johan and his wife had 14 children, so he had to work very hard to feed his family. Here we see his most famous painting, Girl with a Pearl Earring. It's interesting to note the use of the color blue in Vermeer's work. Blue was a very expensive pigment made from precious stones. He was only able to use blue due to the generous sponsorship of a wealthy patron. Today, we will focus on Vermeer's use of the formulas of perspective. Perspective creates the illusion of receding three-dimensional or 3D space on a flat paper or canvas. Look at the lines on the floor, walls, panes of windows, or furniture that Vermeer so skillfully rendered. You get the feeling of being able to step right inside of these rooms. Try your hand now at making a perspective drawing of a room by folding paper and using a straight edge and a vanishing point. To start this week's Vermeer project, you're going to need a piece of drawing paper. Make sure it's thick enough that if you have to erase, you're not going to rub a hole in it. You're going to need a straight edge, such as a plastic, metal, or wooden ruler. If you don't have something like that, you can just use the edge of a thick piece of paper or maybe the edge of a notebook or folder. You're going to need a pencil. If you use a pencil that has a B after the number, it'll be a little bit easier to erase later. And you need an eraser and you'll need a pair of scissors. So most of us will be starting with a rectangular piece of paper that we want to make into a square. To do that, bring one corner of the paper up to the opposite edge of your paper and make these two edges meet in a straight line and you should come to a point here at this corner bring it down like that trace where this edge hits your paper when you open it you'll have a rectangle here you're going to cut this off. This is extra. And after you cut this, you'll end up with pretty much a perfectly square piece of paper. So this is a good scrap for practicing things on later or making a bookmark with. Okay, so now we have our paper with one diagonal fold. We're going to make a second diagonal fold perpendicular to that. So we're matching our corners, pressing down so that our fold goes from one corner to the other. Now when you open this up, you have an X in the middle of your paper. Take your pencil, I'm going to use a marker so you can see it better, and make a dot right in the center of your square where this X meets. Okay. Next, you are going to measure, keeping your ruler or straight edge parallel to the bottom or top edge of your paper, find a place where your ruler measures four inches from this leg of the X to this leg of the X when your ruler is parallel to the bottom. Okay. You're going to draw a line from one corner of the X to the other. I went a little bit over where it's four inches. And then you're going to do the same where it's four inches at the top. Make sure your ruler is parallel to the top and the bottom of the paper and draw a line. I'm using marker just so that you can see on the camera. You should use a pencil so you can erase it. Now I'm going to make a line connecting these two lines vertically, keeping my ruler parallel to the right and left edges of the paper. OK, 
Okay, and one more here. Connecting with a vertical line. So each corner should be hitting right on where my folds were. Not sure if you can see that in, with the camera. This is going to be a wall of my imaginary room. Now let's draw the floor and ceiling lines. Each line you draw is going to stop or start at the vanishing point. So this is where the ceiling meets my back wall. I'm going to draw a line from this corner off the edge of the paper. And my ruler should line up with my vanishing point and that corner and then go off the paper like so. It should be about where your fold is. So my ruler is lined up with the vanishing point and the corner of the room to the edge of the paper. Going to make this line, which is going to be where the floor meets the wall. And now I have a square, like the back wall of my room, two walls, a ceiling, and a floor. Okay, so now we're going to make some tile lines on our floor. To start, I'm going to measure, I'm going to measure one or two inches across, make a little dot at the bottom of your paper all the way across. I'm going to do every two inches just to make this a little simpler and faster. So every two inches I'm making a small dot at the bottom of my paper and I'm going to be left with a skinny or half a tile over here because it was only one inch. Now where each of those dots are I'm going to make a line from my vanishing point to that dot. Always match it up. I'm going to start at this back wall and pull my diagonal line down toward the floor. Line it up, the vanishing point and my dot. Line it up, vanishing point and my dot. Line it up, vanishing point and dot starting from the back wall drawing down now I have lines across the floor of my room I'm going to make this next line in pencil because it's just kind of a guideline and I'll be erasing it soon I'm going to draw a diagonal line from this bottom corner of my room down to the front corner of my paper this is a guideline, so I would draw it lightly because you are going to erase this too. Each place where my guideline intersects with a floor line, I'm going to make a little dot. Okay, then where each dot is, I will draw a horizontal line parallel to the front edge of my paper where that guideline diagonal intersects with my floor lines. Let me show you what I mean. And this is how I'm creating the squares for the floor tile in perspective. So there's one, the closest tile. Now I'm being careful to keep my ruler parallel to the bottom of my paper. Lining it up with where that dot I made, where the guideline intersected. OK, 
Okay, I've just got a few more. Keeping my ruler even parallel to the front edge of my paper as much as possible. All right, let me erase this guideline so you can see better the finished tile pattern for my floor. Do you see it? The tiles closest to your eye look larger. The tiles farther away are smaller. That's part of the illusion of perspective. In life, these tiles are all the same size. But when we draw them with three-dimensional perspective, they appear smaller toward the edge of the paper. They're smaller across, and they're smaller up and down. And that makes it look three-dimensional. Let's add some windows or picture frames or doors to the walls of our room to make it look more interesting. Now, to make a window, or a door, I'm going to start with a vertical line. I'm going to do it in pencil first until I know that I have it right. I'm going to start a little distance, maybe a finger distance, from this vertical wall line. I'm going to make sure my ruler is parallel to the sides of the paper so it's a vertical line. I'm going to start a little bit up from the floor and down from the ceiling. So I made one vertical line. That would be like the back edge of my door or window. Now, to see the top and the bottom edge of my door and window, I'm going back here to my friend vanishing point, putting my straight edge against that and the top edge of my door or window. If you're doing a door, this line would come all the way down to the floor. I'm making a window. So I'm going to make a line tracing from the vanishing point to the top edge of my window. Now I'm going to make a vertical line parallel to this one. Now for the bottom of our window, I think I made this line too long, so let's see where the bottom of my window. I line up my straight edge with the vanishing point and the bottom of this window edge and draw a line. And here's my window. Now, if I want, I can do that with my Sharpie, but I think you can see it okay as it is. So if I want to make a frame around this window, I'm going to use the same process. I make a vertical line. This is going to have a large frame on this window. Maybe this could be a painting instead of a window. It all depends on how you finish it out. Each line I make is either vertical or goes from my vanishing point. Now I have a frame for my window or my picture frame. Okay, If I want to make some cross mullions in my window, I would start with a vertical line about in the middle. If you want to get really technical, there's a way to um, make a guideline to tell you exactly where this would go, but I'm just guessing that it's a little past the center. And then for the perpendicular panes of the window, let's see, I'm going to measure the middle of this vertical line would be about here. So my center of the frame would be there, connecting to my vanishing point. And then I'm 
I'll make two more panes across my window. And you can make these panes thicker or thinner. Does it look like a window? Let's do a door on this side of the room using the same process. For a door, I'm going to make it go close to the ceiling, depending on how tall your room is, and all the way down to the floor. Keeping my ruler vertical, parallel to the edge of the paper. I think that line is not perfectly vertical, so I'm going to do it again. This is why it's good to work in pencil. Okay, close to the ceiling, all the way down to the floor. Then I'm going to use my vanishing point, connect the vanishing point with the top edge of your door, and you don't have to draw the bottom of the door really, but you could, because the door sits just a small bit off the edge of the floor. And one more vertical line for the edge of the door. You can put a frame on this door the same way we put a frame on this window. So that we know it's a door, you can draw a doorknob, which would be kind of an oval shape like that. And once you put a frame around this door, it'll look very realistic. You could even put some furniture in your room. You could put some pictures on the wall here or on the sides. You can add what we call crown molding at the ceiling of your room by connecting this vertical dot make a horizontal line here and connect your vanishing point to that to make the molding go all the way around the ceiling. You could put similar molding on the floor, what we call a baseboard trim. You can get as detailed as you'd like. I hope that this gives you an idea of how to start drawing in one point perspective. If you're really into this kind of drawing, you can look up videos on how to draw with two point perspective, which is a little bit different. But this is a basic first step to drawing in perspective, similar to the art of Johan Vermeer. Here's a similar drawing I did earlier showing a table drawn in a room in perspective and maybe a picture frame and a window with the tile and the trim at the ceiling and the baseboard as well. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this. If you'd like to add color, you've got so much detail in your drawing here, I recommend using colored pencil or fine tipped markers to add color to your drawing. Don't forget to send your work to jennifer at blowingrockmuseum.org. See you next time.